It's just me this week. Uh, Lee's out saving the world once again. And uh, it's just uh, hanging out with John time, you know what I'm talking about? So, but yeah, so this episode, we're going to dive into the conspiracy of the RMS Titanic. And one of the reasons that I'm getting into this is that my oldest son, Leo, is very adamantly interested in the Titanic. He's built models out of cardboard. We've read books about it. He's apparently watched the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. So I'm a big fan of the Titanic and everything that's gone on around it. Uh, my wife actually read him a book called I Survived the Titanic, uh, one of the library books that he had gotten. And the topic had come up on whether or not the Titanic had really sunk. And so I put my two cents in. If y'all know me, I uh, went ahead and put on my tinfoil hat and tried to explain to him that maybe the Titanic really didn't sink. And one of the conspiracies that I had known about or heard about uh, was about the RMS Olympic. And it was the actual lead ship from the White Star Lines, I believe it was called, that actually built the two uh, actually the Olympic and the Titanic and they, the, the big thing that would, that came out of that. And from everything that I read is that the RMS Olympic had issues during its sea trials and went on like five voyages and ended up colliding with one of the British warships that was out there and come to find out through um, my investigations that the RMS Olympic had actually made some wrong maneuvering and actually crashed into the, the ship, um, the British warship. And so from that, what the conspiracy people are saying is that the, what the white star line did is swap the names of the Titanic and the Olympic so that they could claim the insurance money from it. Um, and so what they're talking about there is that in just a little bit of backstory, and I'm kind of jumping around all over the place, is that the Olympic was the first to be built and then the line's namesake. It was considered the lead ship and its main, main trip was widely heralded as its first few voyages were quite unsuccessful. But on its fifth voyage, the vessel ran into some serious trouble. On September 20th, 1911, while passing a military vessel, the Hawk, the Olympic made an unexpected turn, caught off guard, the two ships crashed, and the Olympic was able to limp back into port, badly wounded. And then a trial would later hold the White Star Line responsible for the incident because of bad seamanship. So from there, uh, the conspiracy begins. And so everything that I'm going to talk about is directed to the fact that the Olympic wasn't that seaworthy or the people that were handling her didn't know what they were doing. And so after the crash, the conspiracy theorists claimed the Olympic was an economic disaster. The lawsuit meant that the repairs were going to cost more than what the ship was actually worth. So what the people were saying is that what I was talking about earlier is that they switched the name of the Olympic and Titanic and repurposed the Olympic to be the Titanic to make that that huge voyage from um, Britain to uh, America. So in here, it says the true Olympic now secretly operating as the Titanic would be scuttled in an accident from which the White Star Line could claim the insurance money. And so it's like a huge insurance insurance scam back in the 1900s. Um, but the only thing that ruined the plan was an iceberg. So uh, in my belief, I think that they were trying to find a way. And I think that like, it kind of worked out in their favor, even if that was true, you know what I mean? Even though that 1500 people died, that you'd be able to claim more insurance money from hitting an iceberg than actually anything else like really happened to it. So one of the big things, um, there's a, a guy that wrote a book about it, and he goes into a lot more detail about it. It's um, by Robin Garnier, and it's called 
the Titanic, the ship that never sank. Ingarno draws on several elements uh, and coinc coincidences that occurred in the months, days, and hours leading to the sinking of the Titanic and conclu concludes that the ship sank, in fact, um, was the Olympic disguised as a Titanic for the insurance scam by her owners. Um, the International Mercantile Marine Group, controlled by the financier J.P. Morgan, that acquired White Star Line in 1902. So, I mean, if you look at if you look into like the big key banks, like there's a lot of conspiracies behind the J.P. Morgan, the Chases, um, and all the other banks that are going on like that. So, I mean, this could be the beginning of what was actually going on. So, when they actually made their voyage. Um, When the Titanic actually made its voyage, they were making different port calls and were actually what were listed that they were going to be making. And when that was brought up, they were saying that this it was just a re-divergence to different ports because of weather or whatever else was involved. But there's a lot of things that don't really seem to, to be played by the book if it was the Titanic and why they were doing these things. And it goes into more detail into uh, in the book of why the ship actually never sank. So one of the things that they talk about is that the original Olympic was fitted with a 14 porthole arrangement. And then two extra portholes were added later in 1912 that the Titanic actually had. So whether or not this is true or not could be something that could be looked upon. Uh, there's also another guy, and he's a historian, uh, Mark Churnside. Um, he examined the insurance argument that the ship would be intentionally sunk to claim the insurance benefits, uh, and then quoting that the Titanic cost uh, $7.5 million. It was insured for $5 million. And he um, says that it was backed by the, the IMM American Vice President Philip uh, A.S. Franklin, who confirmed the uh, insurance policy was five million dollars and so if your ship is worth 7.5 but you're only insuring for five million what's really going on there too so if you really look at it none of the olympic and the titanic claims hold up to the to the effort it was to actually switch it like there's a lot of paperwork and different things that you would have to do and see there's just so much else behind it that you would actually really have to do that would it really be worth it to actually change over and look into all of that stuff for $5 million? And I know back in 19, 1912, I mean, that was a butt ton of money, but there's, there's so much more at cost and at stake for your company. And even if you were backed by JP Morgan or whomever, that re really wouldn't need to be done. So I mean, that's just one of the things and it's not to, it's, and being in the Navy for so long, it's a lot harder. And they talk about it in here too, that you know the difference between like the same type of ship and one that was built 10 years earlier or five years earlier, vice a brand new one-year-old ship. Like things are going to run different. Things are going to look different. The way things um, handle or equipment operation or the the wear and tear on any of the the gear that's in there that you would be able to see and there's a lot of different aspects that go into that if that was actually this big ploy or that they were that they were trying to pull off whether or not it was really going to happen but there's no real physical things that people have found that are able to distinguish whether or not it was the olympic whether it's blueprints or drawings or sending the subs down there to look at the what all was going on. And it's really people pulling strings, but that's what's so fun about this 
is that you can find a conspiracy in everything. And that's one of the, the things that fascinates me about them is if you look hard enough and if you want to believe hard enough, then anything that happens could be a conspiracy. So, I mean, with that, I mean, I just wanted to share a little bit about what was going on. I know that we've been slacking in the, the content era, but I mean, I know that Lucas and myself have both just been busy with life. So, but this is one of the things that I found interesting just because my wife and my son were reading it the other day. So if you want more information, you can go read the book, Titanic, The Ship That Never Sank. There's plenty of documentaries about it that you can go and do some research if that's one of the things that you're into. So, but as always, you can come out here, drop us a line, Two Dummies podcast on Instagram. All the link tree is there. And then we can uh, chit chat about whatever's going on. So appreciate y'all taking the time to listen and then hope y'all have a good rest of y'all's week.